Welcome back to NFR. In today's video, we're going to be going through the best and worst songs from 10 different rappers. We have Drake on here. We have Future, Eminem, and more. But before we actually jump into this, smash the like button. We're trying to achieve over 7,000 likes on this. We appreciate you. And let us know down in the comments what is the best and worst song from these rappers. Let's kick things off with Drake. Very big catalog. What's the best to you? Well, listen, if you were to ask my favorite, I would go with something like Pound Cake. I mean, the first time I heard that song, and I think it was 2013, 2014, I was in high school, obviously, and I absolutely adored the production on it. I love the Drizzy verses. I'm also a big fan of the Jay-Z features, so I can't, like, knock off points there. I know some people say, oh, well, it's not that great. I think it's a goaded fucking feature, and even the second half of the song, but ultimately... All bias aside, his greatest rapping performance ever, one of the best ever beats he's ever chosen, I had to go with Tuscan Leather, bro. And it's probably his best ever intro, too, to an album. It's so, a great pick. So I, I, I can't like, I can't go with anything else, if I'm being honest with you. I was considering even Furthest Thing. That was in conversation for me. Um, I was looking at something, even like a Headlines, bro. I feel like Headlines has a lot of steam in his catalog for me. Fantastic rapping performance. Something like The Ride conceptually is up there, but... It's going to be Tuscan Leather. I feel like Drake's prime is really 2011 to 2016. Like, I feel like you need to really dig into that capsule to find the songs where Drake was really trying to cement himself. So that's where I went. I was considering Jungle. That's a song that always gets me in my fucking feels. And, like, that makes everyone reminisce over an old relationship. It's impossible not to from the melodies, the lyrics, the nostalgic sample. Um, incredible song. His best R&B song to me. But... I was like, okay, you know, when it comes to rapping performances, it's probably Tuscan Leather or Pound Cake, like you said. But the song where I really get a best representation of Drake as an artist, being able to do the singing shit and the rapping shit on the highest level, to me, it's for this thing. You're getting That's a great pick. incredible production from 40. I love what he did on the low end and the bass line for that track. Um, I think that when you're going through it, like... Him rapping about how this is the music that he wants to go out to, the gospel choir vocal sample, the beat switch, the primo-esque disc scratches. It's perfection to me as a track. And um, also one of his best concept records when you really go into what it means. So for this thing, I respect Tuscan Leather. I can't be mad at that. What about the worst song? Some people would say Wagwan Delilah, but that's not a Drake song. It's a feature. Okay, Get that out of here. Comes out to two songs for me. Comes down to a couple for me. Yeah, but it really comes down to two, bro. It really is two. And um, I actually, I have a slash on this one. I swear to God, on my notes today, I have a slash. It's really a tie almost. It's a, it's a tie. But you got to choose one ultimately. Ratchet, happy birthday. Yes, of course. And calling for you, bro. Calling for you is awful. Yeah, it's a bad like, song. Bro, calling for you is awful. That is one of like the, oof. Like I, I was just like, what am I doing here, bro? Even at that, like, the Cash Cobain production has aged so poorly in 2024, like, I'm not down. But you're getting, like, a minute and 30 of, like, just, like, yapping. Yeah. Yeah, just a minute and 30 of yapping. Yapping about Oxtail. <laughs> yapping about Oxtail and about, like, flights and shit. Like, I'm all worried. <laughs> getting a random 21 Savage feature. Drake's flows feel awkward. Of course, you're getting cringeworthy, like, relationship bars, and it's just, like, poor writing. And even vocally, like... Um, it, it's really not up to his standard, bro. But with Ratchet Happy Birthday, bro, this is an awful track. Which one's the worst though, out of the two? I think Ratchet Happy Birthday. I, I think Calling for You, like, at least you have Twenty One Savage on there. But like, even at that, it's such a mediocre performance. But there's nothing salvageable with Ratchet Happy Birthday. Yeah, I was looking at all songs post twenty eighteen Drake. Of course, I was looking at Ratchet Happy Birthday, Way Too Sexy, um, Downhill, Gently is another one. Like, Gently is probably the song that frustrates me the most out of Drake's catalog because. It was such a fucking obvious marketing stunt. And ultimately, like, he's done the Spanish accent well in before. Looking at a song like Mia, pretty dope song. But here, it sounds like he's putting on, like, this parody Spanish accent. <laughs> like, it's super weird. But that's not what I went with. I went with Falling Back. Yeah, you went with Falling Back. Fall I'll tell you why. why. It is the absolute worst Drake performance ever. I'm like, you know what? If I'm going to call something Drake's worst song, I really want to focus on what he did wrong here. Bro, half no, of that song, Ratchet, Happy literally Birthday. half of that song is an annoying chorus of Falling Back on Me, which he repeats with those four words for like two minutes. Bro, do I have to go through these Drake lyrics? Bro, the falsetto singing is atrocious, bro. It's awful. Listen, man. First of all, you're getting arguably one of the like least interesting Boy One Than Jahan sweet beats that you could possibly get. But the production is not the worst part about this. It's the lyrics, bro. You talk so tough. I know you're soft like buttercups, 
Reese's Reese's, don't be ridiculous. Just say your piece and peace up like a Bisa. Cool your head top, you're harder than Anita. No, come on, bro. What are we talking about? Yeah, l- lyrically it's worse, oh but I- I'm saying God, performance bro. wise, this is like this takes the cake, bro. <sighs> the Rocky way he stretches out the E note on falling back, horrible. But all right, next up, let's go on to future. This is one that needed no reflection whatsoever. No reflection. I knew. What I going knew on. when I heard it in 2015, and I know in fucking 2024 that it's March Madness. It'll bro. always be March Madness. Best song in his catalog. Um, if you guys want to play like the game of well, what else could have been in contention, Feds did a sweep for me. I was always looking at something like All Right. All Right is one of my favorite ever future cuts. Low um, Life is up there. Fuck up some commas. Those are definitely in contention. But the energy you get from March Madness, that's a generational yeah, song. It's a song where he's rapping about doing 200 on the dash and you have a beat that's going what feels like the same pace of that as well. Um, what, about, uh, what about For the Worst, though? The worst future song, listen, I'm not going to pretend like he doesn't have a lot of misses because he does. I was considering Worst Day, which is a really cringe Valentine's Day song. Even something like For a Nut, bro. That's the one for me. It's, it's for, for a Nut. nut. It's for a it's Nut, that, bro. That was in contention, but bro, go back to something like on DS1, because it is on DSPs. It is available for you. Much more. Bro, I'd have to spin that back. Bro, it, it doesn't even sound like a real professional studio great song. And I yeah. get it. Like There's mixtape vibes and shit like that, but bro... It, it is such an awful song, bro, and you're getting this weird sample flipping back. Like, it doesn't even... It sounds like a PowerPoint presentation song. It sounds like co-worker music. <laughs> I, I can't describe it, you know? But I like, don't know if it's worse than Fur and Nut, bro. Like, that but, song... But at least, like, at least on Fur and Nut, like, the production's all right. Uh, no, the it's pro- not, The production's bro. all right the on The weird Fur and whistles Nut. between the bars. Yes, but... The distorted it, bass is so annoying. Oh, no, but the distorted bass is hard on that. I like uh, the drums on no that way. song. You're getting Young Thug rapping about putting diamonds up someone's butt. Um, you're getting you're getting bars about eating cum in Hong Kong. You're like, what is this, bro? <laughs> what the fuck is this? Like, just keep that keep that in the vault, bro. We didn't need to hear that shit, you know. All right, let's um, keep going on. But with yeah, let's song. go on to Eminem, Best another song. artist that has a crazy catalog. Um, too many classics, bro. There, there is like I think at least ten valid picks you could have for this, where I wouldn't be able to like debate you against the it. way i am was in contention oh, for huge me. contention uh, role model sing for the moment till i well. collapse yeah i had that too um but ultimately i went with stan yeah the way i am is my favorite eminem song but the, the best i think is stan you, you can't conceptually it, like you know how iconic it is for the culture like the it literally impact. It created a word in the dictionary you can't go anywhere else one of the best stan. storytelling tracks of all time we're song though i think i know you're going with this because we've had this conversation before it's for sure nice guy bro Oh, my God. Yeah. And he has, like, Stepdad in here. He has fat. Venom. Yeah, like, there's a lot of bad songs in his catalog, but this... The, the Jesse Reyes performance is atrocious. Yeah, it's like... It's atrocious. The, the song starts off all right. You get some whiny Jesse Reyes vocals. No, but then horrible. it suddenly takes a left turn when she starts screaming with pitch-down vocals saying, Suck my dick, man. You fucking suck. And then later Eminem joins in for the, the chorus, and Eminem continues a weird vibe. Um, with bars like, like my monthly bill from Sprint, they charged me for a selfie. <laughs> Starts off the second verse. I'm not a cheater, but if I'm going to be accused, might as well be. Come on, bro. No, no, this is horrible. I mean, I'm just, he's not that guy. You know what I mean? It's like, we, we don't need the fucking, the relationship tracks about you getting caught at the telly. You know what I mean? Like, you say I'm no good at sex and you think I'm gross and unsexy? <laughs> <laughs> fuck off bro. why why marshall <laughs> why'd you do dude. it to us uh, man still still a fucking goat but let's go with the jid okay so um best song in his catalog what do you have it's hard bro do you want to go with raw rapping performance do you want to go with like his most versatile performance do you want to go for his most well-rounded track i feel like for me that's always the approach is like what's the artist's most well-rounded track overall um and even though i feel like i'm getting a crazier display of rapping from Jin on a song bar for bar like General or 151 Rum or Louder or Radar. The most complete song to me in his catalog is System M. I have it as well. That, that's what yeah, I had to go is. with. The, J- sure. the James Blake vocals. The um, Hollywood Cole and Crystal production. It's just, it's a stupid song. I also song. feel like, yeah, it's the most like earnest that Jid has ever sounded in the sense that like, it's super personal. It's introspective. He's rapping about his relationship with his sister and how he feels like he failed her because the fame sort of like tied him down for a little bit even like the violins bro beautiful oh and even goodness. his pre-chorus but right after his verses are always really sick like it has like this somber vibe to it when he does back on the road gone with the wind blows the way that he, he like those rhyme schemes are just so tight bro um 151 rum 
or something like off D's was obviously in contention just based off of pure rapping ability. Um, never, of course, that was just a spaz out moment. Um, off the Zwinkies too. I love the buildup of that track, but either way, like you said, like everything considered, Sister M's the best song. That's it. Like even like you could say, okay, like he's more animated on a surround sound or on a slick talk, but like, yeah, I just feel like Sister M is like. It's there. It's the it's the deepest look at like Destin himself, like the person. You know what I mean? So For sure. I love that uh, that reflection. But next up, worst song. I have tied. Um, yeah, I have tied as well. But I was considering half doing dope, which is billed as like a Jid and Baby Tron song. So I'm like, I don't know if this could really count, but yeah. like he raps with some really heavy auto tune on it, bro, and it does not sound good. I have never heard it before, so I wouldn't be able yeah. to comment on it. But yeah. Ty just feels a bit awkward. It does. Um, it's kind of watered down lyrically for the rest of the track list for DiCaprio too. Um, even at that, I, I'm not a big fan of the LMA or even like the Black Feature. Um, it's just been one of those songs on DiCaprio too where I genuinely say like, I'm going to skip this. It's one of the few skips in his catalog, if there is any. And even like Jit's performance, bro, like he's using like some A Boogie with the hoodie type flows and you're like, where is this coming from? But I will say this. I didn't want to do this because you can go down a whole rabbit hole for all these artists and end up mentioning songs that no one's ever heard of. But if you do go like pre Pada 2 for Jid, you'll find like some worse songs. You yes, will. you will. But I tried to keep That's it. That's I tried to keep it to like shit that people would recognize. Uh, yeah, know? if it's on like streaming platforms, I'll use it. That's but it. But next up, Gunna. Yeah. Best song. This was tough because to me, yeah, I've always well. had Space Cadet as his best song, but that's a Metro Boomin song. So yeah, I couldn't, I couldn't pull it out here, uh, sadly. Um, I have Top Off off of DS3. That's what I think his best ever song is. Wow. I have Top Off off of DS3. That's crazy. I have the, I have the same one. I didn't expect you were going to do top it, bro. Off. Yeah, that, that's his classic, bro. That's his magnum opus. You you can't not vibe to this. Bro, song. this <laughs> survived, like, the viral TikTok curse. Bro, it, it did it, bro. But not only that, but, like... It's not even one of his most streamed songs, is it? No, it's, it has like 130 million streams. It's, it's, it's extremely streamed, don't get me wrong, but oh, it's there, bro. Yeah, it's absolutely I just love there. the laid back vibe, the nostalgic beat. And also, like, I don't know if you've ever seen the, the Colors performance where he's rocking the UVEC kit. It's kind bro. of like, it, it's it, again, like, I feel like this is his 90210 to a certain yeah, extent. Yeah, low key, bro. This encompasses, like, Gunna's sound. Like, I didn't think you'd go here. I thought you'd go Nasty Girl on camera, to be honest. I was considering it. Yeah. Um, even Pedestrian for me. Mm -hmm. um, I really like that King song. King Kong like, well, is Young big Thug. for me. That's crazy, bro. That's their best collab. That's their best collaboration. But worst, what do you got? Worst song from Gunna. Um, man, it's tough. I was considering Mop with Young Thug just because mm -hmm. I cannot stand the lyrics on there. One of Gunna's worst performances. But I ended up going with Die Alone with Chris Brown and Young Blur off of DS that, Forever. Yeah, that's not a bad pick. I have uh, Dollar Sign, Dollar Sign, Dollar Sign featuring Normani. Yeah, except Off of One of One. Bro, you go back to those flows, it's atrocious, bro. The mm -hmm. auto-tune on his vocals are horrible. Um, and I think you automatically have to shift in a bag where, like, you're going to choose his most romantically driven songs rather than like a lot of like his biggest slappers, right? Like you, you can't go with like a good portion of his catalog because he kind of stays true to what his sound is most of the time. Yeah, I think the reason why I went with Die Alone is because like you're getting this R&B song that has this super somber mood, but yet you're getting Gunna like rapping about wanting to bone a girl and like get some head but like he tries to make it sound emotional <laughs> it's like bro nah, like understand i get you though uh, like read the room bro like this is like tonally just so off well not only that but the reason why i chose dollar 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 sign was because it's literally the hook bro i think it's his weakest mm. ever hook bro within his catalog and it's just it, it was just atrocious for the track list honestly i was so disappointed that it made it but let's go into jack harlow best ever song well, listen, I think that, like, my favorite type of Jack Harlow song is always going to be one of those anthemic, super catchy tracks, like a nail tech, or even looking back at a Tyler Hero. Like, those are really, like, that's, that's the lane where Jack thrives the most, in my opinion. That being said, even though my pick is not chosen because of Jack himself, I still had to go with it. It's Churchill Downs that's every single That's the best song day. in his catalog. That's the and best song in his catalog. Drake's involvement has a major role to play with in that. Because, like, it's not it. Jack's best day in the office, if we're being honest. He has a good verse. I like the verse. But Drake just fucking carried that oh, up so like a, high. Yeah, it's such a crazy verse. The wordplay from Drake. The whole, like, The onomatopoeia with the whoosh. Crazy shit. The, uh... The, the whole therapy the play, session? Yeah, the therapy session wordplay, too, at the beginning of the verse. I was also considering Denver. I was yes. considering uh, Baxter Avenue as well off of That's What They All Say. Those types of deep personal cuts as well where like he reminisces about childhood or he talks about certain things that he's struggling with within his career for me are always highlights. Um, worst song, though. 
worst song. I mean, he has a fair share of mid, for sure. I'm going to stick to Come Home, The Kids Miss You, though. I think that's I where... I have Like a Blade of Grass. Okay, that's a good pick. I, I ended up going with I Got a Shot. Oh, that's a bad one, too. That's really bad. It's one that I feel... It's underrated as being, like, his worst. I don't see people singling this one out. I think Like a Blade of Grass gets, like, singled out as one of his yeah. worst, for sure, as a yeah. popular community sentiment. And, um... I think Jack Jack has like a mass appeal to a big population, right? Obviously, he's got pop with his sound. You know, he's had massive records. Um, I, I think he's going to have a successful career for years to come. But like with Come Home, the Kids Miss You, it was because of songs like this that weighed down the project heavily, bro. And um, it's also the singing performance, unlike A Blade of Grass. It's horrible, bro. It's horrible. Like this guy does not have great pipes and it just feels awkward. It feels awkward when like Jack Harlow is trying to sing to you. You know, like, I, I don't want to listen to this shit. Like, that's just not for me. Yeah. And it was a major nitpick within my review when it's, I did it as uh, well. It's weak. Yeah, but for me, I got a shot. It's just bad pop radio bait, bro. Like, this is, like, fucking JC Penny music at its finest here. And, w. Um, to be honest with you, I really don't like the interpolation of somebody that I used to know by Gatia. He absolutely butchers it. Um, and, like, awful lyrics. Like, she got a Manny and Petty, but still being Petty. Or name ringing bells like school dismissals. It's just a goofy song, bro. Oh, my goodness. It's a goofy song. But all right. Next up, we got Semino. Um, easy for uh, me. Yeah, this was... this was, Actually, this wasn't easy for me at all, bro. It's amphetamine. A a amphetamine, excuse me. It's an amazing pick. I was struggling between amphetamine. I didn't go with it. I was also looking at Wild Irish Roses, of course. But ultimately, my pick is going to be Glass Flows with Raven Lene. Yeah, that's a good pick. Over amphet amphetamine, though? Bro, that, it's like a nine minute like masterpiece. This the, the the duet between them is so heavenly on this track, bro. The way they complete each other's sentences, the way that they double their vocals, um, Semino's pitch shifts are outstanding. Like the vibe is just immaculate on that song. But listen, if you ask me tomorrow, I might say amphetamine or wild Irish roses. Like it's it was really stuck between those oh, three. This is also Semino's most infectious choruses. Moonlight the stripe the day been like this every night the way that he has like that flow unlocked for the chorus and then going into the verses getting the whole second half of the song too like you're getting a Jean Doe feature you're getting Bari on the chorus you're also getting a no-name verse to close off the song and it's beautiful too like you're getting like no-name in like her telephone vibe bro so I, I was just like incredible track, yeah and yeah. even the Monty Booker production is so good bro so so good okay worst song this was easy yeah, was it? This is Crushed Ice with Valet off of Noir. Oh, I have a Noir song as well. Okay. Skettles. Okay. Skettles. I went with Skettles. Um, reason why I went with Skettles, I just feel like this uneventful and uh, flat production throughout the entire song itself just does nothing for me. And Smino's like flows and cadences, bro, are almost inaudible and disjointed to the point where I'm like, how? Like he's Smino. Like he's supposed to have some of the craziest and coolest flows. Um, on a record, and I just felt like it was at the bottom of the barrel uh, for this album, especially for Noir. Um, not only that, you're getting this really disjointed writing, and there's just like lackluster lines all throughout his verses, and I was just like, it's not striving in the production area. His performance is weak. The writing doesn't yeah. necessarily do anything for me. It's definitely the worst it's song. It's probably kind of uh, his weakest album, but yeah, no, for me, when it comes to Crushed Ice, it's just a weird party song where there's no real rhythm, there's no cool inflections by Smino, which is something I always look forward to. And you're getting some of the worst lyrics of his career. Like, she fucked with the Squidward. She gave me Keeny Bottom. Yeah, I even have lines on mine. Cold as February, we sauced up like Nando's. Hold the Piri Piri, very necessary. Sheesh, I'm man. swerving early. <sighs> yeah, but and all even right. That, like, the chorus and the intro itself are a bit long, too, before you get into the verses. Yeah, it's just weird entries in the catalog. Yeah. But let's go on to Trippy Red. Oh, I have one more for you, okay? Just before I end okay. off, this one's crazy. Mark my turds. I'm a shit on these nerds. Bok, bok. He skirt to shoot. He chicken curry. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> That's what I mean, though. It's like I, I was looking at the yeah. writing on Genius. I'm like, no, nah, there's no way. Uh, but, okay, let's keep going on with this trippy red. What trippy you got? red, bro. I mean, to be honest with you, I think it's no secret that his peak was 2017, 2018 with the first A Love Letter to You, the second one, as well as Life's a Trip, which is my favorite trippy album. And this wasn't too hard to come did up with. Did you do Oom's Revenge? I did do Oom's Revenge. Okay, um, so uh, Oom's Revenge is his best ever rapping performance. It's probably one of his deepest songs emotionally. It's a tribute to his brother. Um, it's it's a beautiful song. But ultimately, I feel like I treated this selection kind of how I treat like Exo Tour Life for Uzi. 
where it's like I went with one of his and big, taking a walk. I think taking a walk is really? his best ever song. Wow. The Scott Storch keys are fucking beautiful, bro. And there's like this huge like juxtaposition, bro, throughout the entire song where it's like Trippy's talking about his death, bro, but he's doing it in such like a light fashion, bro. And it's just such a beautiful sonic. Like the production is so light, you're going through it and he has like these lively flows. You're getting the Scott Storch keys, but he's talking about the suicide letters that he's leaving to his lover, you know, like there's like this crazy contrast within the song that works so well. So I think as a concept record and even just as an anthem itself and one song that I feel like kind of speaks to his sound the most, I went with Taking a Walk. Yeah, I can't be mad at it. I think that like I went for Oom's Revenge for the opposite reasons as you. It's like this song is not your typical cloud rap or like melodic emo trippy cut. Like this is trippy rapping with a lyrical prowess over a soul beat bro and i just absolutely love the writing on this track it's about him lifting up his boys alongside with him during his come up it's about him feeling a void after his brother passed away and still trying to feel connected to his soul through spirituality um and ultimately it's just it's amazing to hear him without auto-tune on a track as well it's just um again when it comes it's to just pure, pure rapping yeah, pure rapping performance beautiful. it's absolutely great his beautiful worst song, song though worst um, i cheated song. here lou I cheated. You cheated. How did you cheat? Ah, uh, bro, I went to genre sad boy. Ah. I, I cheated. I cheated, boo. I did it, but I had to. I I, I didn't do it, but uh, what, 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 you could have uh, you could have you, you, you could have played fucking roulette with that album and just picked whatever you yeah, wanted. No more, bro. That that is one of the most awkward songs yeah. I've heard all year, bro. It sounds like um, it sounds like almost like a parody, bro, of like what a MGK song would be, and it's just because like it has trippy names like red attached to it. So I can't look at this song and skip over it. It's in his catalog. His name's on it. And, bro, I don't even want to go through the lyrics of this song, bro. It's just, it's horrific. Okay, what, what do you think I went with? Off of mansion music. Oh, You know yeah, what I yeah. went with. I, I think I know what you went with. Anyways, go for it. Toilet water, bro. I mean. Yeah, it's a, it's a good, uh, the flush, the flushing the sound. The flushing sounds, <laughs> the fucking poo-poo fucking ad-libs, bro. Like, they're saying that, like, their ops are shitty, like. Dog, this could have been a tweet. It didn't have to be a song, bro. Like, I feel like I'm watching a fucking scene out of South Park and I'm listening to a song. Like, it's just, it's so over the top. The beat sucks too. Obnoxious 808s throughout it. Um, and yeah, bro, how, how could I listen to the toilets flushing in the car? Yeah, I guess. In my earphones, like. Th that was an all time go to moment in a reaction, though. We were crying a lot. Yeah, yeah, we, we were pissing that. our pants, bro. But it's okay. absolute disaster class. But uh, let's go on to Doja Cat. Let's do it. All right, her best song. By the way, thank you for this selection because when I was going through her catalog, I was trying to find this song and you put me onto it. Um, I was trying to ask for just some lyrics and it's going to be attention. It's for sure going to be attention off of her Scarlet album that released in 2023. Yeah, I always prefer the songs where she's really rapping, like even songs like Addiction or Rules off of her Hot Pink album. Those were in consideration. But you know but... what's crazy though is that like this was a single for the album. Was it? Yeah. yeah, it was a single. Attention. Yeah, it was a promo single. It was released right before June 16, twenty twenty three. Um, but what's beautiful is that bro, you're getting this incredible jazz instrumental in the back. Um, it feels like classic hip hop. It, it does. feels like a classic boom bap beat, and you know she's tackling all kinds of different things. But the thing that I like the most about her perspective on this song is actually her talking about how she paid the respects to the greats, bro, on the second verse. Like that's yeah, a towards the end. Like that's a crazy perspective. I paid all my respect to those who taught me how to make it and now I reap the benefits but no confrontation. Y'all into y'all fall into beef but that's another conversation. I'm sorry but we all find it really entertaining. Like the perspective is just so cool, bro, and she almost seems like this super villain in hip hop, bro, that's embracing everything that comes with it and I, I really enjoy it as a song and um, even at that, like she doesn't have like these crazy... Um, vocals for the chorus, but yet it's still sweet, it's still somber, and then boom, she gets into these rapping performances just, that just take over. Yeah, you know? I just so, love seeing her in full rap mode and getting that vulnerability from her rapping about um, how certain fans were judgmental when it came to her weight and stuff like that, and just all the media scrutiny, seeing her attacking that with these relaxed flows over this dreamy jazz beat with um, the harp and the shiny keys. It's just um, easily her best song to me. It was not really a debate but a worse song, um, there's many to choose from. I think Wet Vagina, just on the, the song title alone, deserves a mention yeah, here. Off the same album, which is kind um, of crazy. I, I didn't choose it, though. Did you go with Wet no, Vagina? I went with Moo. Moo is bad. Uh, yeah, I went with Moo, bro. You, you really want me to break down Moo for you, bro? It's... <laughs> oh, brother. Oh, I, 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 I know it's what that's two, all about. Yeah, it's two verses, four choruses, a refrain of her being a cow. You want me to read this over for you? Bitch, I'm a cow. Bitch, I'm a cow. I'm not a cat. 
I didn't say meow. Bitch, I'm a cow. I'm a cow. Isn't this Loki the song that blew her up? Like, I feel like it kind of blew her up. sure. Yeah. You want me to go through the lyrics? You don't have to. Got milk? (laughs) Bitch? Got beef? Got steak hoe? Got cheese? Great a hoe, not lean. Got me A1 sauce, please. (sighs) But at least she knew what she was doing. Like, she knew she wasn't trying to make a fucking, a sing about me, I'm dying of thirst here. You know what I mean? No, absolutely not. Like, there's honestly, like, I'm happy this came out because it catapulted her career into a completely different direction and... She fucking did great things with it. She's one of the biggest artists in the world that has made some incredible, meaningful records like Attention. This is her worst. I went with uh, Bottom Bitch off of the Hot Pink album. This sounds like something Rebecca Black would follow up Friday with. Like, it's just this internet meme pop song. Um, She's overdosing on autotune here. The lyrics are weird. The instrumental is uninteresting. You can go through the lyrics if you want, but you, like, it does not do it justice. You have to hear this song, and I guarantee you, it'll annoy you quicker than Muda. Is it worse than Old MacDonald had a farm? I gave him a titty trying to keep him calm? <laughs> <laughs> she doesn't Old MacDonald for this. Lyrically, no, <laughs> but sonically, uh, yes. But you know what? I have to sonically, give her credit. yes. Bro, honestly, like, you're getting this lo-fi hip-hop beat in back of the moon. It's low-key hard, bro. Yeah. Like, if anyone has that instrumental alone, like, I'll low-key whip it. I swear <laughs> to God. But, all right, let's keep going on with this. Last uh, rapper for today. This is going to be Amine. And um, there's a lot of great songs to choose from. Pressure in My Palms was definitely in contention. Fetus with uh, Injury yeah, Reserve was in contention. But def- you went with Roots, didn't you? I didn't go with Roots. No, okay, that's another honorable mention, Dr. though. Doctor Whoever. That's a great fucking pick. Doctor Whoever off of 1.5. I, I was stuck between Doctor Whoever and Burden, the intro on Limbo. I went with Burden, ultimately. Yeah, Burden's yeah. another great track. I can't be mad at that. Um, I went with Doctor Whoever because of how important it is of a track. You know, I, I think it does a great job at advocating for mental health and um, just what it meant for Amine's community. Like, I feel like that track took him to a different level, like, on an artistry scale when people were really like, oh, fuck. Like, he could genuinely, like, bring it to a different level and, like, you have Amine playing the role of the patient, then you have the therapist and the writing as well. And, like, just that back and forth is so fucking cool. And, I mean, like, it's interesting because this song is not his most commercially successful one, but I feel like it's the most important for his, uh, for his like, catalog. And he made so. a banger out of, out, of, out of a personal song, which it's is It's incredible, too. bro. It really is. I bump this song on a regular basis. But, yeah, I can't be mad at Burden as well. What a great way to start it off. One of the best beats he's ever rapped on. And speaking of Burden and Doctor Whoever, both intros. Like, two of his best songs are intros. Yeah. But, um, yeah, I love the funk guitar. I love the vocal sample. And I just feel like he's just talking about some real shit, bro. He's rapping about his own mortality, about him getting older, seeing people around him getting married, having kids, and just him reflecting on him aging within the game, talking about, like, crazy shit he's seen in the industry. And it's just one of the most passionate sides I've ever gotten from Amine. And um, great singing on the hook, too. He just found all the perfect pockets here. Great song. Let's go on to the worst. Um, I was looking at, like, 2.5, which is his most recent solo project. He went with a lot of, like, quirky styles, vocal manipulation. Didn't love all the attempts, but... Didn't choose anything off of there. Neither did I. I went with Hiccup featuring Gunna off of 1.5. That's an accurate selection. Um, I went with the 2019 single called Places Plus Faces. Yeah, that's not good. Oh, that's not a good song, yeah. bro. It's weird. Like, you're getting him in this bag where, like, you want to talk about A Boogie? Like, this is like an A Boogie, like, Toronto, like, SoundCloud-esque song for, um, for Amini. And I'm like, bro, this just doesn't fit. And it was always labeled as a freestyle. So I, I guess the effort was just never there, but... I've always felt like Amine has been intentional with his records. I always felt like he put out stuff like a Doctor Whoever or like a Burden or like a Woods, Pressure in My Palms, like these meaningful records that has this incredible writing. And even when he tried to go after pop attempts, like example, like a Caroline, that blew him up early on in his catalog, there was always intention behind it. Mm-hmm. It was always super fun. It felt unique. But with this, it was just like, nah, like I, I see the play with this one. And it's just not going to work. And it's one of his least streamed songs, one of his least viewed songs on Genius as well. And I think it's for a good reason, bro. People just fucking forgot it. It's a really forgettable performance within Amini's catalog. And that's why I had to bring it in. Yeah, so I went with, uh, with Hiccup featuring Gunna. And it's just, it feels like the most forced effort from Amini in the sense that he's fully engulfing himself into Gunna's world. Super generic trap beat. You're getting... Um, this performance that doesn't move you whatsoever. Then you're getting Gunna coming on, replicating the same flows from Amine, making the song dull and predictable. Then Amine sings on it a little bit and hits these awful yeah. high notes. Um, and yeah, like I said, just a predictable a predictable song. It doesn't add anything to his catalog. And it just felt like he was trying to make a Gunna song and it just didn't work out whatsoever. But 
Yeah, man, that's uh, that's the episode. That's the episode right there. Pretty reasonable takes all throughout. Can't really complain with anything that you brought in. Everything was pretty yeah. accurate. Not too many hot takes here, I'll be honest. So that being said, ladies and gentlemen, let us know where we got it right, where we got it wrong, and which rapper should we bring in next for maybe a new installment of Best and Worst Songs from These Rappers. Thank you so much for watching till the end, and we'll catch you in the next one. Peace.